This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. There are two data types that are very frequently used that I have observed. List is one data type that is very frequently used. You may get to see that list kind of data type multiple times when you are working on multiple programs. And dictionary is another data type. You have to be extremely comfortable with list and dictionary. And both of them are very simple. Afterwards, maybe sometimes you may have to handle tuple also. Very rarely, you may have to handle set as well. So let us understand what is a tuple data type. Tuple, it looks like a list but it is not exactly a list tuple is also a collection of items it is stored in a single variable tuple also includes homogeneous heterogeneous homogeneous means if i have numbers 4 41 96 these are all homogeneous heterogeneous means 4 41 and then there is a string called march so you can have a tuple like this you can have a tuple like this list is defined in the square brackets like this 4 41 96 this is a list if you put it in round brackets like this, 4, 41, 96 in these parentheses, then this is called a tuple. The tuple in multiple sense, it look just like a list. But there are some fundamental differences between tuple and list. One of the biggest difference between a tuple and a list is tuples are immutable. Once you define a tuple, you cannot change that tuple at all. It is immutable. Once you define it, Either you can delete it or you can use it. Can you edit it? You cannot. For example, this I have defined as a list from four. If I want to convert it to five, let us suppose this is my list. Okay, this is my list. Now, how do you access four from my list? If I want to access only the first element from my list, how do you access it? How do you access only four from my list? Let me write it down. So I'll go to the code file that we are discussing. So let me add some code cells in between. Now let me go to that tuple and then I'll add it. You can go to this uh, table of contents. You can directly go to the place what you are looking for. And then I will add some code cells. For example, if I say I'm defining something called my list that is equal to 4, 41, 96 or 97 or let's say 4, 41, 89. Now, if I try to say type of my list, what would be that is I have defined it in the square brackets. It is going to first allocate some space for me since this is a first command. That's what is common. So this is a list. Now, if I want to access only the first value, which is four, I will write my list of zero so that would be returning me whatever is the first element four now if i want to replace four with five that means i want to make my list as five in that case what i can do is i'll access it and i'll say that is equal to five and then if i try to print my list it will be five forty one eighty nine so this is called mutability editing you are mutating it you are editing it you're changing it now that is possible in a list, mutability is there. Now, let me define a tuple. My tuple. Tuple just looks like a list. Now, if I try to print this, my tuple, it says this is a tuple. If I try to print a tuple, it just looks like a list. But what is the difference? And accessing is also same. If I say my tuple, what is my first element? my tuple zero four but if i want to change like this if i want to edit a tuple to five and try to print it tuple will say you know what tuple is immutable tuple object does not support item assignment it is immutable you cannot change it this is called immutability now what is the use of this immutability since once you create a tuple since you cannot change it it will consume very much less memory space internally since it consumes very much less memory space internally the operations that you do on tuple are much much quicker 
so in some cases maybe we will not get to see that much difference because the difference will be in micro or nanoseconds that means 1000th or 1 by 1 millionth of a second so that much difference we don't even really observe but if you are working with very very larger data sets multiple calculations are there maybe there would be a difference between tuple and list execution time so what i have seen is most of the times people use a list but in some cases when you are going through some of the pre written programs by some of the standard documentation or some of the standard uh, code files you may find this uh, tuple also being used so we will go a little bit more in depth into a tuple let us say if i am using a tuple let's say customer id if i'm creating a tuple called customer id is equal to i'll show you the exact differences between tuple and list with a couple of examples so the moment you are typing it using these parentheses round brackets that means automatically it will be stored as a tuple the type of customer id is tuple now it need not be only strings or it need not be only numbers it can be a mix false as well so if i say my rank is equal to first one is 146 and then na comma 5 so na is a string here even then it is allowed in fact this is a mix if i say what is the type of variable which is rank 1 which is like 46 is a type of variable rank 1 will get 46 46 is an integer if i say rank 2 what will be the output it is na which is a string so some of the elements are integers some of the elements are strings this is known as heterogeneity homogeneity means same type of values all are integers heterogeneity means mix of values some of them are integers some of them are strings now yesterday somebody told that when i did some program the output came when i check the type it gave as tuple tuple means a collection of elements a tuple looks like a list but the difference is it is immutable now tuple has a little bit more advantages let me show you some of the advantages or i would say the differences between tuple and list and there are some cases where we use tuple there are some cases where we use list that also i'll try to highlight so there is something called tuple packing what is packing you don't need to really uh, give these brackets without those brackets also tuple supports like if you want to if you are an advanced coder you don't want to take care of all these small small things you want to do the coding very quickly in that case you can use tuple, tuple packing region is equal to east west north south ideally i should give this ideally i should give it in this manner but if you do not give it also automatically it will be stored as tuple look at this advantage you just write with comma separated values assign it to a variable this is that this doesn't happen in any other programming language you just write some random collection of values you have your collection of values you just assign them to region that will be stored inside a tuple for tuple you don't even need these brackets but ideally i don't suggest this as a beginner level programmer i would suggest you to use these uh, parentheses while defining a tuple but without those parentheses also all of them will be packed together this is known as packing they will be packed together inside one value not only packing unpacking is also possible let us suppose this you want to store it in r1 this you want to store it in r2 r3 r4 then you can do unpacking i would say r1 comma r2 comma r3 comma r4 is equal to region simple now region contains east west north south i'm storing them in r1 r2 r3 r4 now what is the value of r1 if i want to print it what will be the value of r1 e e if i want to print r1 comma r2 that will be east comma west now this kind of code that you will very frequently see in standard documentation let us suppose there is a function which is returning two values as output the returned values are stored like this r1 r2 equal to region or whatever is the function output so if i try to see the type of r1 that would be a single value which is string if i try to see the type of region that would be a tuple this is known as tuple packing that means you just put some comma separated values inside this that works this is known as unpacking that means if you have a tuple if you want to get them into single values that is also possible you may not see packing very frequently but you may see this unpacking very frequently that means suddenly you will see most frequently what you will see is i have a value a value 1 comma value 
is equal to some function or some tuple will be written like this. Now, this is very strange. In most of the programming, this kind of uh, stuff is not allowed. Do you agree? In Excel VBA or in Excel uh, functions or even in SQL, this uh, looks uh, very, very wrong to write. There is no order that we are following or there is no syntax, very, very less syntax. Now, that is the beauty of tuple. Maybe if you're an advanced programmer, you don't need to worry about a lot about uh, syntax. Now, coming back to the differences between list and the tuple, I will try to highlight once again because this is one of the interview questions that is asked a little frequently. So when it comes to the first difference, if you define a tuple versus list, the first difference, what is the first difference? What is the first difference between list and a tuple? Let me define a list first or let me define a customer ID tuple is equal to this one, customer ID list. Now I have two objects. The first difference is if I try to say customer ID list one right now, Customer ID is 194. I want to change it to 176. Does this work? This operation, does it work? This operation, does it work? Since I'm updating the list item, it should work. But if I say customer ID, customer ID tuple, if I want to change that, in fact, this is one, I'm sorry, this is 195 is changed to, in fact, if I try to print it, the updated values are also printed. List has been changed. 176. Does this work? No, sir. It will not. It will not work. Tuple is immutable. Now, you may say that, sir, this is a disadvantage. Why are you saying that as advantage? You have to see this from the point of view of advanced programmer. When it comes to advanced programming, if a particular program is taking two hours to execute with a list item. Now, if I can reduce it to one hour by defining a lot of tuple items, then I'm saving a hell lot of time. So tuples are immutable. Once you define a tuple, once you create a tuple, there is no way you can change it. Now, since they are immutable, internally, Python allocates less memory because it is static memory. Once you define it, you're not going to change it. I don't need to allocate extra values or I don't need to allocate extra information or extra memory for you to modify later on. So if I try to see the tie size, let's say, if I say my tuple size, I'll just show you what is the size for getting size there is a particular package called get size off so from system library there is a function called get size off let me use get size off and show you what is the size so if i say what is the tuple size so here we have the customer id tuple right what is the tuple size what is the list size what is the tuple size let's say let's call it as bits or units or something just for our sake of understanding Tuple is 64 units, list is 88 units. With how many elements? Three, three elements. Now, if I increase the element, if I have one, three million elements here, and there are three million elements here, then there will be a huge difference between this. 64, 88 may not be a huge difference, but 64 million, 88 million, there is a huge difference, isn't it? So almost there is a difference of 25 to 30% between them in the memory allocation. Tuple is consuming this much memory, list is consuming this much memory. So due to that reason, tuple works much, much faster. Just for the sake of, uh, I would say fun, I have run one operation that will try to copy paste, copy paste a tuple one billion times. We will try to note down the time using a function called time it. And then we will do the same operation with list. Let us see how much time does it take. Now this operation, you don't need to do it. You just need to observe and remember this. So from time it, this is just an experiment that I'm doing. So this, what it does is it will take the list and it will try to copy paste the list, copy paste, recreate the list, copy paste it, copy paste it. How many times it will do? So this is a million and then uh, so 10 million times, 10 million. That means one crore times we are copy pasting a list. So we are modifying a list or we are copy pasting a list. That means I'm tweaking the list. That means the size of uh, this 88 size, I'm tweaking it one crore times. How much time does it take? Internally, in terms of seconds, it took 2.3 seconds. Since the list is a very small one, only three elements are there. It took 2.3 seconds. Now what I'll do is I will try to use time it. I'm going to repeat it with what? The same experiment. I will be repeating it with time it with tuple. So what is your expectation? Is it going to take more than this or less than this? If I repeat the same operation with a tuple object, less, less yeah. time. So I have done it the same amount of time, 1.2 seconds. Can I say almost half the time? With the yes. three elements, it took two seconds. 
imagine if uh, a list elements are taking 20 hours and your tuple elements are taking 10 hours mm -hmm. now that 10 hours is a huge difference maybe two seconds to one second you may not really appreciate it but 20 hours to 10 hours is a huge difference do you agree yes so i'm not saying that you should remember this code or you should write like this or you should test like this this is just for our sake of understanding illustration purpose only i have shown so there are two major differences that you have to always talk about when it comes to tuple versus list. Tuples consume less space, they are immutable or less space wise you leave it. You say tuples are immutable. The second one is since they are immutable, since they consume less space, the operations that are associated with tuples, they are much, much faster. Now, since very rarely we run these many one crore operations or one million operations, we may not see a huge difference. With your own eyes, you may not find that difference. That's why you may not be able to appreciate in most of the programs, whether it is a list or a tuple, doesn't matter. So rest of the world, what they do is for every operation, they use list only. Usual programmers like you, usual programmers like me, everybody around us, they always use list only. But the standard programmers or advanced programmers, those who are thinking about time optimization also, maybe at the advanced layer level, you may be using tuple as well. Sometimes we may have to like in, in a single program, in defining some of the values, we use uh, tuples. In defining some of the values collections, we may use a list. Let me give you an example. And you have to tell me in which scenario would you use tuple? In which scenario would you use list? If you can answer this question, that means we are good with the understanding. Don't give me an immediate answer. I want you to think twice before giving me an answer. Let me explain. Example one, you are writing a function. You need to take input parameters from the user. The user has entered two values. The function will take these two values from the user. For example, it is a simple function. The user has entered the date of birth. The function will calculate what is his age. That means if the date of birth is entered as 1990, then our function will uh, use the current day 2024 minus 1990. It will say that, you know what, your age is 34. Like that, the function will give the final result. Now, how would you like to store the input given by the user? That's a question. Don't give me the answer. So keep the answer with you. So are you going to store the user input in a tuple? Or are you going to store it in a list? Are you going to take the user input? Are you Do you really need to modify the user input? Or do you need to preserve the user input once the user input gives? Once the user gives the input, do you would like to, would you like to lock it? That is scenario one. Okay. In scenario one, you're taking one user input to a function. After taking the user input, let us suppose you went to a website. In the website, they have asked, enter your first name or you entered Flipkart. In Flipkart, they have asked, enter your address. Once the user enters the address, do we need to modify inside the system or do we need to lock it inside the system? Do we need to store it in a list? Do we need to store it in a tuple? That is scenario one. Are you with me? Scenario one, is it understood? Let's go to scenario two. Store all the columns inside a variable. Return first two columns. I have a data frame. I am interested in all the column names. I want to store all these column names into a list or into a tuple. I can store it in a list. I can store it in a tuple. Now I want to store them in a collection. I want to store them in a variable. Later, I want to rename the first column and pass it on to the next step. I want to take all the column names and one column has a space or some problem with it. I would like to rename and pass it on. Now, how would like to, how do you like to store all the column names? Is it inside a tuple or inside a list? Scenario one, taking a user input parameter inside a function. Scenario two, storing all the column names inside a collection. Tell me scenario one, is it a list case or a tuple case? What do you do in scenario one? Once you take the user parameter, would you like to lock it or would you like to modify it internally? First, yeah, first one, it's a tuple. First it's one, a tuple we have to do first it's one will be tuple. First because one is we are tuple. Not yeah. Because we, we are not, not modifying modify. anything. We should not modify because once yeah. the user gives, you no, know, you are not supposed, let's say once you enter your address in Flipkart, do you think Flipkart has to change that address? Do they have the uh, no. power to change your name to something else, change your street address? It's dangerous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's better to yes. lock totally because once your address is entered, whether you entered rightly or wrongly, Flipkart has to lock it. So that should be stored in a tuple. It sh some item should be immutable. Once the user enters, I would like to keep it like completely immutable. I don't want any. Once your customer ID is created in Flipkart, do you think the customer ID should be changed multiple times? No. Let us suppose your customer ID is your mobile number itself. Unless until you change it. That means they will destroy that tuple and then create a new tuple. But once the customer ID is created, that should not be changed. So once you create, if you don't want to modify anything, especially function input parameters, it's always good to take in tuples. Because once you take it, you do not want to tweak with it. The second one is you want to store all the column values inside a variable and then 
Later, what is the requirement later? Rename the first column. The moment I say rename, you're talking about what? List. Modifying yeah. it. Modifying it. Modifying means mutating your or list. tuple is yes. immutable. List. So here you will go for list. List. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Even though tuple and list are different, even though tuple is a little faster, immutable, but I have seen a lot of people using list only. Even you will be using list only. But if at all you come across tuple, I don't want you to be totally blank. That is why I have discussed tuple. Okay. Maybe you don't need to memorize the syntax related to tuple, but you need to be aware of this fact that lists are slightly different from tuples. That's it. Okay. Are you with yes. me, everyone? Yes. So tuple is a small point of discussion in our uh, overall data structures or the data types. Continue with the next video in the playlist. We are covering everything step by step. If you have any questions or the comments, please post them in the comments window below.